Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Basketball tutors, right? You know what I'm saying, right? Right. Now, you had that when when you was growing up, though, right? Now, the men that you, that at your age are they all now righteous, doing right, doing right, brother? Okay. Some of them selling drugs. Right, or or in jail, right? So so. What, what, what was lacking then? We had the community centers at that time. I remember going to Boys and Girls Club when I was young too. And but yet, a lot of our men our age are still out here, you know, gang banging, slanging drugs, having baby mamas. Statistics. Somebody got to break the cycle. I'm glad you said that. Now, Tim, you remember my question that I posed to you, right? What was my question I posed to you? How do we fix our, our, our people, right? And, and we started with some of the solutions of having these programs for kids that are no longer available, right? Read this right here. First Maccabees 343, is it? 343, restore the decay to state of our people. Give me that right there. This is the book of First Maccabees, chapter 3 and verse 43. Bring it up. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people. Now, the, they are the, the elders of Israel, the elders are, of our people. They got together, they saw what was going on that, you know, back then and even today, as we address, you know, we again, we got the gang banging, the drugs, the murder, so on and so forth. We are, the, we are in a decayed estate. No other people can say that they live the way that we live. So how are we going to get ourselves together? Give me uh, First Kings um, 8, for, as far as repentance. Because I see there's a little program or something like that going over there for the kids. You know what I'm saying? Something to keep them entertained. Some of them to keep them, you know, off the corners and stuff like that on a Saturday afternoon. But right, no, I'm about to say, but how does that how does that impact them overall? How does that go back to answering that question, which is how do we fix our community? The problem is, Timmy, we don't understand how we got here. If we don't understand how we got here, then we can't understand what the solutions are because we've had the Boys and Girls Clubs, we've had all the community stuff. You know about Martin Luther King, you know what I'm saying? We've come together, even got Black Black Lives Matters now, but overall, from the time we got off the slave ships to today, no matter how much we marched, we protested, we prayed, we fought, we died, in 2022, the conditions are still the same. Right. White man ruling over us, we at the bottom of society. So it goes back to my question is, how do we fix that? How do we how do we change that? Because the drugs are still flowing in, and we don't manufacture drugs on a high level. You said get rid of that pagan church. What that mean? Have church like this? I, I, I like that. All praises, which goes into showing us who we really are in this Bible. That, that that's the solution right there. Showing us how we got here, so that way we can get out of it. Because believe it or not, we all was just like you. You know what I'm saying? We all just like the people we trying to compel to come in. As my brother brought up earlier, give me that in Titus three. We all was out here doing the same thing, slinging drugs. Murdering our brothers, you know what I'm saying, whoring on our women because we didn't know any better. You know, we didn't we didn't understand it. and again some of us knew things wasn't right, but we didn't know how to fix it. You know, we thought again if we just vote, we had Barack Obama, what that do for us, Tim? Not a damn thing. So we had a black president. Give me this right here. This is the book of Titus, chapter 3 and verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. So we understand that we all was in the same boat. It ain't like we out here just perfect and trying to just come at people. You know what I'm saying? No, we was all in the same position, right? We ourselves was one time. Read. Disobedient. Uh -huh. Deceived. Uh -huh. Serving diverse lusts. Uh -huh and pleasures, uh -huh. living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Now them some, them some um, strong, strong words, right. And what we was doing, like my brother was pointing out, is we was serving this white God right here. Right. Now, a lot of us may not say that we serve a, a white God or a white image of Christ, but we serve the doctrine that comes with that, which is doest thou will. God loves everybody. God knows my heart. Come as you are, stay as you 
are. So we gonna do whatever we think we feel what, what feels good or what feels right when the Bible lets us know black and white plainly what's right and what's wrong. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's how we're serving that doctrine when we're going uh, when we're doing anything that that is a verse from this Bible. So the question that I ask is, which is why we're out here, because we understand once we understood this Bible, we're now gonna go back and show our people how do we get in this position, but also how do we get out of it? Go to First Kings eight, and, and a lot of that is understanding that we have to repent. We have to change our ways because, as I mentioned before, we know about Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey. We've had strong black men, you know what I'm saying, strong leaders of our community who have come together to try to, to try to fix our, our people as a whole. But unfortunately, again, we're in the same position. And the, the one thing that was missing was the fear of the Most High. Right. Give me this right here. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8 and verse 47. Bring it out. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. What's that word bethink mean, Tim? Yeah, I know. Look, we, we was we was some smart brothers, you know what I'm saying? Because this, this was written by us for us to us. So we wrote this. Bro, brother named Tim wrote that word, but thinking there. <laughs> Give me that brew. And that's a great try. To, be, to bethink means to remember. Right. Solomon said that we must bethink ourselves. So in replace word bethink was, yeah, right, remember ourselves. Now, Tim, why would we have to remember who we are? <laughs> Come on, Tim. Because the Edomites, the Edomites, right. The Edomites, so-called white men, according to the Bible, erased our nationality. I always ask this, Tim, if we was nothing but unga boongas in the jungle, who was no threat to anybody, why was it so important to change who we are? Your, your name, Ankuta Kinte, is now Toby. Why was that so important? Because the Bible says we have power with God when we understand who we are. When we understand that we're the Israelites of this Bible, that's our power. Matter of fact, give me that in Isaiah 1 and 3. How you doing, sis? Let me ask you, what's your nationality, sis? What's your nationality? See, and that's what it is. We got to think because somebody might say that we African-American, that we Moors, that we black, that we humans. Brother, what you call us? What's our nationality? African-American. African-American. There we go. That term didn't come around until Jesse Jackson, I believe, around the 1980s. That's right. You said what? A son of ham. See, you, so you, you, you know some stuff, Tim. So let me ask you, why are you not keeping the most highest commandments? You said what? I was about to say because that that ain't a sufficient answer, right? And that's and that's what I said. We we need you. We need you on this side, Tim. Because you you know the little that you know that you're still teaching people to sin. And what I what I what I mean by that, give me the hold that, give me numbers uh, 15 real quick. You know about the law of fringes, Tim? Yeah. You said no. Okay. Well, now you're about to learn about it. So now, once you learn about it, then you must now begin to keep that law. And it's not hard to do. Fringes are, are the stuff that you see on the bottom of our shirts, right. on the bottom of that brother garments. This is one of the commandments that was given to us by the Most High. Read. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garment. The word bid means command. So the bottom of our garment. So the men on the bottom of the garments like the brother got behind you or your t-shirt. For the women, they're supposed to be wearing uh, dresses. So that would be the bottom of their dress. At the bottom of your garment, you're supposed to have the fringe. That's little, little stringy things that you see. Read. Bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. We're still here, so we still have to wear that, read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And that was the other part. So above the fringe, you also have to have a ribbon of blue. That's one of our that's one of our dress codes commanded to us by the Most High God. So now that you know that, give me that in uh, Psalms as a 119.59 or 60. Now that you know that, that is now a commandment that you must now keep. It's one way for us to be identified as well as uh, for us to be able to keep the commandments because we are peculiar people. You know what I'm saying? We the trendsetters. You say what? Well, I guess depending on depending on how how, you know, how, how text you get it. I had, I had another brother. I was going to the grocery store the other day. I'm walking in and he says, Shalom, brother. I'm looking at him like I'm looking at you. What you mean, Shalom? How, how, how would I know that you was an Israelite unless, or that you knew that you were Israelite? And I can identify you just based off your look, you know what I'm saying, that you have that understanding. He was able to identify me, but I'm looking at you, bro, where your fringe is at. 
That's one simple commandment. That's very easy. You can buy these off, a lot, off online. Now, today's the Sabbath, so we can't buy today. But when the sun go down, tomorrow, Monday, whatever the case may be, go online, go to Joanne's Fabric. You can buy them at a spool. You can sew them on, or you can actually take your shirt and cut them up a little bit around the fringe, and then you put the ribbon of blue, either sewing it um, or glue, however you want to do it. He didn't say how you got to do it, but you, but you got to have it done, right. Let me ask you, Tim, are you married? You're not married. You got a girlfriend? Okay, I'll praise. Give me this right here. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 59. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. So once we understand what God what God requires of us, I know you said you were keeping some. Once you understand what's required of you, then now that becomes what you must do. You actually must begin to keep those commandments. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.